He lives in the clouds, uplifted to the end of the circuit of the sky. He enters into all the trees and they become inanimated. With branches waving, he raises heaven to the furore and to the seas to revolt. And they become peaceful again. And when he comes to peace, he brings the divine Nile to a flood. One hears his voice, but he is not seen, while he lets all the throats breathe. He strengthens the heart of her who is in labor, and lets the child from which it henceforth came from her live. London and southern England, white Christmases have become rare, almost extinct. Few Londoners can remember the last time snow stopped all traffic, or the last time even a thin film of ice formed on the River Thames. Yet in Charles Dickens' day, blizzards were commonplace, and 300 years ago, the Thames froze so solid enough to support not only crowds of people and vehicles, but fires for roasting whole oxen. The change also applies over to the rest of Europe, Asia and North America too. From 1430 to 1850, weather in the Northern Hemisphere was so severely cold, so much so that the entire period had become known as the Little Ice Age. Glaciers advanced in all northern mountain ranges and the Arctic packed ice expanded. High altitude forests died along with the vegetation until recently climatologists tended to think of this period as an anomaly merely a small kink in the graph. The main trend, surely, was towards a warmer climate. Climatologists are no longer so sure. They used to believe that the Ice Age was a very long-term gradual affair, spaced out about 100,000 to 300,000 years apart. And since the last Great Ice Age ended some 12,000 years ago, we ought to expect another 88,000 years of balmy weather, at least. But in 1955, an ingenious University of Miami geologist, Dr. Caesar Emilali, declared a new evidence that began demolishing the old theory. Instead of four ice ages, he found seven. 
instead of 100 years of warm intergalactical change between them. This was known as the Little Ice Age.